I once had somebody tell me that if I sent out the right message about Bitcoin in a video that I could gain a ton of subscribers, but that's not what I do. <laughs> I don't tailor my message to gain a bigger audience. I talk about the things that I think are important and then I trust that my audience will find me. Shall we? Bitcoin. Bitcoin. It's something that's been on my mind a little bit recently, so I figured I'd just discuss my thoughts on Bitcoin. This is not financial advice. Please do not consider any of this to be me telling you what to do. This is just what I'm doing, what I think, and if you get something out of it, by all means, subscribe, share it, like it, comment in the description. Nope, that's my job. Comment underneath the video and maybe we can get some discussion going. I'm not going to go into what Bitcoin is and what Bitcoin isn't because if I'm honest, I don't think I know enough about it. All I'm going to discuss in this video is the idea of people buying Bitcoin and whether or not it's a good investment for the future or whether it's a, a, a good idea to get rich quick. Spoiler alert, I don't really think there is any good ideas to get rich quick. Getting wealthy slowly and deliberately is the best option for anybody. Unless, of course, you do manage to... <laughs> I've got a video on the lottery coming up soon as well. If you do manage to win the lottery, obviously that's really nice. To have a quick injection of like 50 million would be lovely. I would definitely not say no to that. The point being, trying to get rich quickly as a strategy is probably not the best way to go. I was reading through Twitter last week and I came across this tweet, which I found to be very appropriate. If you have credit card debt, you should not be thinking about Bitcoin. If you don't have an emergency fund, you should not be thinking about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a fun investment, but it's not going to save you. Save yourself. I fundamentally agree with that statement. If you've got credit card debt, or any debt for that matter that isn't a home mortgage, if you don't have an emergency fund set up, unless you've got a ton of money to play with that you can comfortably lose, you should not be thinking about risky investments. However, I have dabbled in Bitcoin in the past and I do have a little bit of money in Bitcoin at the moment, but it's only money that I can afford to lose. It's not a great deal. I've got about a hundred pounds in total. I am contradicting myself slightly because I still don't have a fully funded emergency fund. I've got about three months. I would like six, so I've got half of my emergency fund funded. Therefore, I can sort of justify it to myself that I can spend a little bit of money on the highs and lows of the Bitcoin, <laughs> the Bitcoin roller coaster. I think there's been a lot of buzz about Bitcoin over the past couple of years because it was, what, three, maybe two years ago. Let's have a little look, actually. Looking at this chart now, it was around 2017 that Bitcoin started to take off. But when you look at these things and you look at these charts and you see what you could have done if you had invested at the right time, and obviously hindsight is 2020, I feel like I should. <laughs> I feel like you need to put a trigger warning in before saying the words 2020 now, considering what a hell of a year we had last year. But you look at these charts and you realize that, you know, you could have invested at the right time and you could have put money in then and you would have had a big increase. It just leads to a little bit of FOMO, which is the fear of missing out. And that's a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous thing for people who are in my position, who don't have a great deal of money to spend on risky investments. Basically, any time that I have bought Bitcoin, I found myself getting way too interested in the ups and downs of the market. Constantly checking the apps, constantly checking to see whether it's up, whether it's down, whether I've got some profits, whether I've got some losses. And to be honest, it actually probably, <laughs> it's probably not that good for my mental health. Honestly, I think the volatility is a little bit too much for me. It's exciting but it also takes up a lot of my mental energy. So in my opinion, it's far better to come up with a steady strategy of investing in order to build wealth over time rather than trying to play around on day trading. There's a very good saying which I enjoy. <laughs> Who enjoys a saying? A wise man once said, it's not timing the markets that's important, it's time in the markets. You know, it's important to make sure you've got a very good foundation for your finances before doing any risky investing. And definitely understand what you're investing in before you invest any money. Because it's when you don't know what you're doing and you walk into a situation without being fully informed that you lose potentially. <laughs> I don't want to be dramatic, not everything. If you're selling your house to invest in Bitcoin, Definitely a bad strategy. <laughs> Be safe out there. Be sensible with your finances. Don't give your money to anything that you don't understand. I want the best for everybody. <laughs> That's such a broad statement. Take care. Look at this tiny studio. Couldn't be bothered to go next door to my actual studio. So I've set this little table up in my lounge. Just wanted a quick chat, really.